This video is intended to serve as an overview and analysis of WIRT and all the content from the Hook, Line and Inca update. Although most of the hype surrounding these two major additions to the game was missed, there are a number of viewers of the Big 3 rework discussion video who expressed their wishes to see a video on the two additions to the game. WIRT is the third DLC character added to Don't Start Together, who can either be purchased from a store or weed from spools. Wirt is a highly unique character, who brings mechanics to the game unlike any we've ever seen before, similar to the other two DLC characters and presumably the fourth. Having a Wirt player on the team actually changes how the game will flow a surprising amount, as she brings along what is almost a side quest that she can fulfill for massive stat boosts to both her and her people, Merms. Building the means to facilitate this is a construction project similar to the Celestial Portal. Wirt can also make disguises for her teammates that allow them to be friends with the Merm kind, which makes for a very team-oriented quest, going hand in hand with the construction project's large build cost. Wirt herself is a young warrior merm, which explains both her eagerness and the appearance of two horns on her head. She has 150 health, 200 hunger, and 150 sanity to begin with. She gains a massive 30% speed boost while walking on marsh turf. Being a merm, Wirt is attacked on sight and cannot negotiate with pigs. Unlike Weber, she cannot trade with the Pig King, which is pretty damaging but thankfully is nullified when playing with others. Wirt's main goal in the game, apart from surviving, is the construction of a royal tapestry which can be used to summon a Merm King, who gives health and damage bonuses to Merms, and stat bonuses to all Wirt players. The royal tapestry requires 5 boards and 5 rope to initially designate an area, and then a further 20 bull kelp fronds, 10 pigskin and 15 beefalo wool to complete its construction. This second stage can be contributed to by any player, whom Wirt can make a clever disguise for out of a fish, some reeds and 2 sticks. This disguise boils after 6 days, but during that time can be worn in order to make any character count as a merm, which allows them to befriend merms just as Wirt can. Once Wirt and her friends have built a royal tapestry, any merm that passes by will sit on it. Once fed a total of 50 hunger, it'll grow into the almighty merm king. The king must be regularly fed food. He has 200 maximum hunger, which runs out in 4 days. When his hunger empties, he'll start to lose health. However, like all merms, the aspiring merm king can only eat vegetables, making upkeeping his hunger a more tedious task. The king can also indirectly defend himself from attackers when he reaches low health, summoning four merm guards who will fend off hostiles. The king slowly regenerates his health, but can otherwise be healed either from foods or normal healing items. The merm king will buff all merms and work players on the server while he's alive giving merms a health and damage buff. Merm guards also receive this buff, however it's even more potent, giving them a greater health and damage increase, as well as a slight speed buff. All work players gain a total of 100 health, 50 sanity and 50 hunger, and some badass war paint. As long as the king's subjects continue to feed him and keep him alive, the buffs will last. Additionally, while the king is alive, all merms become passive towards everything including other players. Interestingly, this abatement of combat does actually extend to the Merms' long-standing enemies, the Pigs. However, the truce will not last long, as Pigs still attack Merms on sight. Wirt can also build Merm fortifications and crafts Merm houses to spawn Merm guards and regular Merms, respectively. These two structures can only be built on marsh turf, which Wirt can also craft for some seeds and two rot. All of these upsides are complemented by Wirt's downside. Although it's our only one, it's absolutely massive and largely changes how the game will be played. Since Wirt's allegiance lies amongst the Merms, she cannot consume meat foods of any kind, which also extends to eggs, fish, and all related dishes. To complement this, Wirt does gain 33% extra hunger from anything that she can eat. Not being able to eat meat is a humongous downside. Take one look at the most notorious crockpot recipes and, well, most of them count as meat dishes, meaning they are completely off the table for Wirt. This includes meatballs, meaty stew, pierogi, surf and turf, any previously heavily relied upon meat dish, is no longer an option. This forces Wirt players to try out new avenues which haven't ever really been explored before, due to the potency and reliability of meat and meat dishes. In the early game, foraging for berries and carrots still remains a pretty good source of fruit and veggies, although without meat you will not be able to condense them into hunger efficient meatballs. Ratatouille and Fistful of Jam make good alternatives. Later on, stone fruit become an excellent source of veggies, especially in combination with berry bushes, although they require navigation of the treacherous seas and exploration of the perilous lunar isles which is both a dangerous and expensive journey. Wirt also has a small number of minor character-based perks. Namely, she can gain sanity for holding living fish in her inventory, also keeping them alive longer, but loses sanity when holding a butchered or perished fish. Additionally, Wirt can read Wickerbottom's books. Each one makes her gain or lose a particular amount of sanity. Reading Wicker's tomes does not produce the book's usual effect, but still consumes durability. 
Wurt can also gain extra hunger from durians, spot tentacles in the swamp, and incur lesser penalties for drowning. Overall, Wurt makes an excellent addition to Don't Starve Together as a DLC character. Her perks are incredibly unique, and they build upon the Merms, an in-game species who's certainly not gotten as much love as others. Her Turf War-esque perks are highly clever, and the focus on building structures is quite a nice change from the many characters based around combat. Her downside isn't revolutionary, but it's still done rather well in my eyes. It does manage to complement her upsides, creating a passive approach to the game focused more on farming and building and for hunting. The main issue I have with it is that it isn't original. Wigford has essentially the exact same downside, although with a focus on hunting instead of farming, the exact opposite of Wirt. Another incredibly minor issue I had was that Wirt doesn't display the iconic, disgusted animation that Wigford plays when trying to eat meat foods. Instead, she simply examines the meal when using the default right-click action. Obviously this doesn't really matter, but it felt like kind of a missed opportunity for a memorable quote. So concludes the brief analysis of Wirt. Sadly, this video had to be split into two separate parts due to real-life complications. This is certainly not ideal, but I won't have an opportunity to work on any videos for the next few days. The review of Hook, Line, and Inca will follow shortly after I return. Anyway, thanks for watching and for your patience, and I guess I'll see you next time.